Good morning everyone. I'm Arya and I'm here to take you through the concept of deflation. Imagine the situation where everything from groceries to electronics costs less the next month. Doesn't that sound like a good thing? But what if I told you that this could actually cause more harm in the economy in the long run? So what we are here to learn today is the meaning is the meaning of deflation, its causes, the effects of deflation, some real life examples of deflation and the policy responses against deflation. So what does deflation actually mean? Deflation simply means the fall in prices of goods and services in an economy consistently over a period of time. So how does the prices fall? Let's just understand this by taking the consumers as C and let's take the businesses or the firms as B. So decrease in aggregate demand. So we know that means that the consumers are not spending as much in the economy. So why would they do that? One reason could be that they're uncertain about the future or maybe their income levels have decreased. So when the consumer's income level decreases, what happens? The businesses will have fewer customers. Now in order to get more customers, what would they try to do? They would decrease the prices. So this is one way deflation happens. Another reason, another cause could be the central bank imposing tight monetary policies. So, the central bank imposes tight monetary policies such as reducing, uh, sorry, reducing the money supply or increasing the interest rates. So we know when the interest rates are increased, the cost of borrowing increases. So that's why that way people would have lesser money with them. So they wouldn't spend as much. Another way is the central bank might regulate the money supply by decreasing the money supply in the economy. So again, the consumers would have lesser income with them. Now, since we have understood how this, how deflation happens, let's exactly understand what happens during deflation. So again, we have talked about the consumers and the businesses, right? So when the prices fall, what happens is even if people can buy, they have this expectation that the prices would continue to fall. So when that happens, again, the, the prices are falling and the businesses are not getting enough customers even when the prices are falling. So now what happens is businesses start to struggle to make profits. And in order to overcome the situation, what they do is cut down on their expenses, that is cut down on their production costs. So they cut down on their production costs, slowly they cut down the wages of their employees and worst case scenario they start laying off people from work. So that basically means people are losing jobs. Now who are these people losing jobs? It is directly affecting the consumers. Now whose income will also decrease. Because people are losing jobs, we can say that unemployment is also increasing. So now we see that the income was already low. Now because people are losing jobs, their income further reduces. Now because of that, businesses will have lesser customers again. Because of this, they will again cut down on their production costs. Now again, they will have to lay, uh, lay off people from work. Job losses increases, unemployment increases, and this loop goes on. So this vicious cycle is known as the deflationary spiral, which is one of the most dangerous effects of deflation. Now, let's talk about debts. So let's say I have borrowed 1 lakh rupees uh, from the bank and then deflation took place. Now just because prices are falling doesn't change the fact that I still have to pay that 1 lakh rupees. Right. But, what, but since we have seen the situation, we know that people's income is decreasing. So that same 1 lakh would feel like a bigger part of my income. Right. So it will uh, feel more tougher for me to repay that debt. So that's why debt burden increases in the, in the situation of deflation. 
Like we already talked about in the deflationary spiral, people are losing jobs, unemployment is increasing, and so are the so is the worsening of the deflationary cycle taking place. Now, since we have understood or gotten an idea of what deflation is, let's talk about some uh, real life examples of deflation in order to strengthen our concept. Let's talk about the Great Depression of the 1930s, which is one of the most uh, one of the most uh, biggest economic crises uh, history has ever seen, where everything from food, clothing, and even houses cost less every year. Like the prices fell by 10 percent every year. Even though that sounds like a good thing, the situation was actually not the uh, not like that because. People didn't have any income, so they weren't bothered even if a loaf of bread or even a car cost less 10% every year. And the businesses were also struggling at that point. Another example is of the lost decade in Japan, where around the 1990s and the early 2000s, uh, Japan saw deflation, experienced deflation, and because of that, businesses were not hiring new workers, and uh, uh, businesses were not hiring new workers, and they were not able to expand as well. So economic growth was not taking place and consumer spending was also not happening. Let's also talk about some recent examples of deflation. One we can very well relate to is of the COVID-19 pandemic, where because of lockdowns, industries like the tourism and hospitality industries were very, very affected. But governments of different countries took measures, which we'll, ta which we'll talk about later as well, uh, in order to control this situation. Another very recent example is of China, during, uh, who has been experiencing deflation from the previous year. Uh, we all know that China plays a major role in world trade. So whatever happens in China could affect other countries as well. So this is why policy makers from other countries have been keeping a close eye, close eye on Japan, on China, my bad, on China in order to uh, overcome their situation as well. Now, since we have understood, I think from now we can say that deflation is not a simple situation. We can, we can understand how dangerous deflation can be. So, in order to control the situation, there are different policies which can be taken. So, there are two types of policies. The one we are mainly going to talk about today are the fiscal policies. The fiscal policies relate to the government budget. So, one. Increasing the government expenditure. So when the government expenditure increases, let's say construction of roads. So when roads are constructed, it's the construction workers who get income, right? So that means the consumers are getting income now, so they can spend more. The businesses are getting profits now, so they don't have to lay off workers anymore. So we can see that deflation can get corrected over here. So this is one way of correcting deflation. Reducing taxes. So, when the government imposes lesser uh, amount of taxes onto people, people will have more disposable income. So, when this much is their money, and if lesser amount of taxes are given, they have more disposable income, which they can spend on the economy. So, now because of that, consumer spending increases, and this again corrects deflation. Reducing public debt. So, when the government borrows less from the public, the government, uh, the public would have more money with them, so they can again spend more. Increasing borrowings from the RBI. So when the government borrows more from the central bank of any, uh, any country, the government has more money, so the government can spend more on the public, so the public gets more money again. Now in brief, I'll talk about the monetary policies as well. So what we have to understand here in the monetary policies, the central bank, uh, uses quantitative and qualitative instruments in order to correct both deflation and inflation. Here we are talking about deflation, so some of the monetary policies are mentioned here, uh, which can correct deflation as well. So, so that's all for today's session. What we learned today basically was the meaning of deflation, which is again the fall in prices of goods and services in an economy. We understood how deflation happens, what happens during deflation and the policy responses or the control measures which we can take in order to control deflation. And we've also related some real life examples in order to strengthen our concept. We talked about the Great Depression, the lost decade in Japan, the COVID-19 pandemic and China's recent deflation. 
So what we can conclude from today's session is, while inflation makes life expensive, what deflation does is make both businesses and consumers at risk and can literally freeze economies. So I hope this concept is very clear to you today.